Professor the Honourable Gareth Evans, Chancellor of the Australian National University. Professor Brian Schmidt, Vice-Chancellor. Distinguished members of the official party, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the, uh, the wonderful honour that you have bestowed on me. Uh, I'm very humbled by uh, the action. I didn't expect it and uh, I will uh, uh, wear the honour with great pride. Uh, thank you very much, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor and all members of the university. Can I add my congratulations uh, to all the graduates who uh, received their graduating certificates today? Uh, it was wonderful to be here uh, and it was wonderful to see uh, what an international university the Australian National University has become over the years. Uh, I think it's a, a great thing uh, that we have seen so many uh, students, sorry, graduates from so many different countries. Uh, may I say that uh, you've now got great skills, skills that you will use in your own communities, in business, uh, in government, in academia, in research. Uh, I think it's very important, though, that you face the next challenge. And I would submit to you one of the great challenges you face into the future is that much will be expected of you as leaders in the fields that you are so skilled in. Uh, and it will happen very, very quickly. Indeed, as soon as you go into a job, I'm sure many of you will be uh, leaders. So let me give you a few pointers as to what I found has worked very well for me through the years. Uh, and I have uh, five fundamental uh, pointers, five fundamental uh, uh, principles uh, that I frame all my leadership around. Let me say at the outset, leadership is the lifeblood of every successful organisation that I have seen. I have seen excellent leadership deliver outstanding results, far beyond the expectations of myself and others. Conversely, in both the military and in civilian life, I've seen uh, poor leadership uh, result in uh, very poor outcomes, and in the case of the military, uh, mission failure. So it's very important that you master leadership as you go forward with the rest of your lives. The first principle is clear direction. If you're a leader, you need to give direction to your people. Uh, you need to have a vision. It will generally be the, uh, the vision of the, uh, the company or the organisation. But you fundamentally go where the vision is. And it's up to the leader to be able to uh, articulate, communicate and explain uh, that vision to the people that you interact with who will be following you and following your lead. In more operational circumstances, such as I found myself in, in Kiev, uh, in the Ukraine a couple of years ago, when I was asked to lead Australia's response to the great disaster of MH17 and the loss of uh, almost 40 Australian lives, uh, what I found was uh, that it was vitally important to let everybody know what my intent was on a daily basis. Um, by that way, we were able to uh, adjust what we needed to do on the basis of uh, how things had developed over the previous day or the previous few days. So vision and intent are the important things and it's also all about communicating uh, and explaining them to your people. The second principle is culture. I think everybody in the room would know that culture is incredibly important. I've found the sort of culture that works for the organisations that I've been in and that I have led is a people-based uh, culture. Putting people first. It's people that deliver the outcomes that you will need as leaders. Therefore, you need to 
create a good relationship with the people and the culture needs to reflect that. I think the culture always needs to be values-based and I always put a high price on the values of professionalism, integrity, courage, innovate, innovation, teamwork, collaboration and respect. And by respect, I mean respect for everybody who is in the organisation, irrespective of uh, uh, ethnic background or gender. Gender or ethnic background are never discriminators in the organisations that I have led. And if there was any sense of that in the organisations that I led, I worked very hard to eliminate them from the organisation. I think the pursuit of excellence is also very important in that sense. So the next principle is leadership itself, strong leadership. I've mentioned putting uh, people first, but the, way, the best way to lead people is to lead by example. Do as I do, not do as I say. You will have to set the standard and you should do everything uh, that you would expect your people to do. I've always found that uh, safety is something that's vitally important and uh, you, as the leader of uh, an organisation, always needs to put safety first because at the end of the day, uh, the health, uh, the well-being of your people relies on a safe environment. So there needs to be a high priority on that. And can I say that I've found that if you work tirelessly for the welfare of the people that you're privileged to lead and you empower them, they will follow you to the ends of the earth. And I found that in the military environment and in the uh, civil environment. It's a very powerful thing. I think the, uh, the other thing about uh, leadership is there's no place uh, for negative leadership. No place for intimidation, coercion or bullying. All leadership needs to be positive and it's a it's uh, the only emotion that should be evident is the emotion of passion. Passion for what you want to uh, achieve, passion for how you are going to encourage your people to achieve those, uh, those outcomes. And I think more and more, as the complexity of our environment uh, evolves, um, leadership needs to be a collaborative, uh, a collaborative activity uh, collaboration uh, is much more powerful, uh, or leadership through collaboration is much more powerful uh, than the old idea of a single leader uh, telling everybody to go this way and that way. At the end of the day, the complex problems that you will be facing require uh, an input from uh, all of your expertise, and it really is a collaborative form of leadership that I think is required in the modern era. My fourth principle is communication. The best form of communication is a small group or one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one. One -on -one or a small group, eye-to-eye, eye, face-to-face. People can connect in those circumstances. And I would submit connect much more effectively uh, than through uh, compu computer or social media. It's very, very powerful. It delivers the best results. And um, I think the other thing you've got to be very good at as a leader is you have to have the ability to listen. Listening is vitally important. And uh, when I was uh, leading diff difficult cultural change, uh, I used to go out and walk around my people on a a daily basis and I would feel the pulse of what was going on by listening to the people. Uh, it was much more about listening than transmitting and uh, I think communication, uh, listening is the most important part uh, of the game. Finally, uh, the final principle is 
uh, creative uh, and constructive relationships. I have never seen anything positive come out of an adversarial relationship. So I have always worked to have a constructive relationship that over time becomes a trusting relationship, a relationship that is full of integrity and trust will deliver fabulous outcomes, particularly when you get to, start to the stage where you start to partner and work collaboratively. So it all comes from having a constructive relationship in the first place, and what you get is trust and integrity and fantastic outcomes over time. So that's really all I want to say. There's some simple little um, rules, experience, if you like, principles uh, that I have given you. Uh, I hope they are helpful to you as you go out on the, the wonderful lives that you have in front of you. It'll be a great journey. Uh, it will require leadership at all levels. Uh, never ever underestimate that somebody beneath you can also assist you in your leadership journey in achieving the outcomes you need to achieve. And at the end of the day, I think the higher you go, the further you go, uh, the more collaborative your leadership will become. And again, that will deliver great outcomes for you, be it business, government, or indeed uh, academia uh, in a research environment or in a teaching environment. So good luck, congratulations again, and it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you today. Thank you.